At nine months pregnant with my first child, I sat in a room alone in front of a video recorder and sobbed to my unborn daughter. I sobbed about how much I loved her already, and I sobbed about how I couldn't wait to meet her. And then I told her that my greatest wish was for her to do one thing, to love life. What a wonderful thing to ask, right? All I wanted my child to do was love life. But I never knew what loving life would entail or what asking her to love life would do for my love of life. In my first few days of being a mother, my mother showcased the selflessness us mothers are known for. She left her home and put her sleep, peace of mind, and desires aside to help me, her daughter, adjust to the chaos that erupts when a new baby has arrived. As sleepless and tired as we both were, she would still do our dishes and clean my house. At that time, I saw the pure sacrifice I had benefited from my entire life, but never fully appreciated until now. Having those moments with her and my mother-in-law allowed me to immediately connect the dots of just how selfless good parenting has to be. Shortly after my daughter's birth, I remember telling my mother-in-law how poorly prepared I was for the sheer feelings of terror and worry that became my burden of motherhood when this gift of life was literally placed in my hands. Her response was a simple one. It never goes away. It never goes away? Knowing what a worrier I am, I knew I was in deep trouble. But as I muddled through this fog of motherhood, I quickly learned that all of that worry has an antidote. All of that worry, all of it, is manageable thanks to a child's knack for connecting with your inner kid. Seeing things through your child's eyes is an amazing way to enjoy and love life. And finding that joy in the midst of the parenting storm has become my most valuable motherhood skill. The excitement a child has at a popsicle, or the ability to sleep in a sleeping bag indoors, is comparable to that of an adult finding out he's won the lottery. Seriously. Since having kids, I've remembered I love coloring a pretty picture, how fun building a tent can be, and how important I felt when allowed to help cook. In the course of one week, there can be highs of euphoric happiness and amazing joy, to lows of watery eyes, headaches from crying, and grumblings of Yosemite Sam proportions. I've learned that cutting a sandwich in half can be devastating to a two-year-old, and that beans get stuck up noses very easily. That kids imitate dogs, especially if it means a chance to poop in the yard. <laughs> True story. There's no cap on how often your child can visit the ER over the course of a week. And to a child, eczema apparently sounds like a cooking, cooking ingredient. <laughs> I've called my mother and mother-in-law countless times for detailed history and advice. Was I really that stubborn? How'd you get through to my thick skull? How on earth do you potty train a boy? <laughs> what would you do? Should I pick that battle? Am I trying too hard? I repeatedly tell my mother I knew I was going to enjoy motherhood, but I had no clue how much. Watching my parents interact with my children lets me know that the fear the joy and the love grow exponentially as generations progress. I love seeing my kids enjoy life more than I ever envisioned I would. I can now understand why parents patiently, yet eagerly, wait for their children to become parents. So I think back to that video, filmed before she was ever born, before I fully understood what I was getting into. And two children later, I am flustered and exhausted, messy and forgetful, but I love life too.